this video is going to be kind of an academic exercise in doing stuff that you don't you wouldn't normally do the concept here is can i use tokens to set conditions and the statement i'm going to do here is i want this is the the scenario i want for the user to pick from a, a time picker a, a a period of time and if the time period is larger than say six hours i want it to use one set i want it to query one uh, set of data if the data is if it's uh, less than six hours i want it to query differently i want to use a different a completely different query based off the time that a user picks and we're going to set all of that using tokens and so i'm going to walk you through the whole process and hopefully this spurs your mind into how you can do other cool things so let's put into practice dashboard I'm going to create a new dashboard. Lame channel time based tokens. Different. which query should be run. Now I want to uh, make this really clear for those who may have done this. There are conditions and hide dashboards and show different dashboards. That's not what we're going to do. We're actually going to flat out change the base search based off of what a the time frame a user chooses. So, let's go classic dashboards. First thing we want to do is let's get ourselves a time and let's get ourselves a submit button. All right, now we go into source. We're going to need a query. So we write search, query, and the queries can be something very simple a make results command. Make results is really cool because you don't even need to have any data whatsoever to make this work. So we're going to do eval equals foo equals bar. And then we will table the results back and give me foo. Very simple. It's just a query to do something, to make Splunk query something instead of token. There are other ways of doing this, but for the intent of this query, this uh, one, we're going to do it this way. I'm going to go in earliest. Oops, we'll put it all on the same line. And we'll do a latest. And that will use build one dot earliest and filled one dot latest. So this query should just work. It's not going to do a whole lot. I hit submit. It runs the query. Cool. Well, what do we do with that? Now we want to go set tokens. And I showed this in the previous video about tokens we can do set token equals and i'm going to go call this um, my result and then we're just going to make this be equal to result dot foo so if this is working right we're going to get uh, back the values here. So what we forgot to do though is set done. All right, so we'll get a, uh, we're gonna have a, a token set that says, uh, what is my result? We're going to come down here and we'll just show each piece of these as we build it. We're gonna put a row in, we're gonna put a panel in, we're going to put HTML in there. Now we can just do our own HTML. I'm going to do a table width equals 100% and TD. Scroll down and we're going to put here, we're going to say that query results and that will be my result dollar sign. 
So if we run this, we can see that it came back with bar. Why is it bar? Because we assigned it bar right here. We said foo equals bar. Nothing really special there. Now, what we want to do is we want to start manipulating the time field. And so I'm going to go set token equals start time. And instead of using a set, we're going to use a eval token. You can actually use evals right here in Tokenville. And this is going to be a relative time. Now, field one earliest. And so what this is, relative time, is a really cool little function. It's basically, we'll do math on it for you. It'll take now, this is the format, go grab the current time, which every time in Splunk is in epoch time. So it's gonna grab the epoch time, and then it's gonna subtract what earliest is. It will actually add, but earliest is a negative number. So it's going to be, in, in, it's gonna come out to be a negative. And so we're gonna see the start time of the query. And that would be the earliest time. And that's gonna be the epoch time of the earliest time. So let's write that here. And we're gonna put, I'll just put earliest time here so it makes more sense. Earliest time, and that's gonna be start time. Let's see this in action. I hit submit. This should be the epoch time for 24 hours back. Cool. Um, and we can actually change this. Let's watch if I adjust this to 60 minutes. Hit submit. It's going to move the time back, etc. All right. And so just so you can, you can do this all in one line. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to keep it very simple so we can see it. Um, we're going to call this seconds from now. What we need to know is, so we know what the epoch time is of 24 hours ago, 60 seconds, but we don't actually know what field one dot earliest is. So we can do this. We're going to go um, now minus start time. So just to show the things you can do with a, with a token, I'm going to grab the token that was declared here and use it in my next eval statement. And if I do that, I'm going to call this seconds back, and we're going to call this, maybe we should give this, a, we'll call this earliest time in seconds, time picker in seconds. If we run that, we'll see that 60 minutes. What we find is that Splunk doesn't exactly use 3,600 seconds. It does some rounding. And we can see that right here, that it's actually 3,600. You'd think it would be 3,600, but it's actually 3,629. It rounds. If we go 15 minutes, hit submit, 900. In this case, it didn't need to round. We could go to 24 hours, and we'll see that it's really close to 88,600, but it's not quite. Um, 86,400, anyway. So we can see now time picker in seconds. Let's keep moving on. So now I have the results from my query. I have a start time, so I know what's the epoch time, uh, and then how many seconds is that. And now I wanna go and find out if something is how 
far back that actually is in hours. We're going to turn this into hours because I don't want to work in seconds. I want to work in hours because I said I want to put my parameter. Let's go if something's over. If I choose over six hours, I like six hours, so I can choose the four-hour period, the time block there. So I'm going to choose six hours. If if uh, the time picker is greater than six hours, use one source type. If the uh, time picker is less than six hours, use a different source type. And so in order to do that, we're going to go here and we're going to say um, token. I'm going to call this the round value. Actually, I'm going to call it hourly value. And let's just keep things simple. Let's not capitalize anything. Hourly value. And the way we solve that is we're going to use the round function. And we're going to take the start time. Second, sorry, seconds. from now, and we're going to then close that, divide by 3600, because that's how many seconds are in an hour. We're going to round, and since we called round, so what we're going to do is we're going to take these number of seconds, and we're going to divide by 3600 to get us the number of hours, and we're going to round down to the hour. and Basically, we're going to drop off all the zeros in the hours. I don't want 4.5 hours. I'm just going to I'm just going to round it. If I do that, let's go look and put rounded hour. So this rounded to 25 hours. If I take four hours, rounds to four. If I take 60 minutes, rounds to one hour. If I take this 15 minutes, it rounds to zero. So it's just rounding it here for me. Nice. All right, we're almost there. Now we're going to use the condition. And I'm going to use data source. That's what I'm going to call it. And the eval, I'm going to use an if function. If hourly value, close it. And now, because we're in XML, we can't use, I want to use a less than symbol, but less than is part of XML and HTML market markup language, so I need to use an and LT. That'll give me the less than and a colon. That's accepted. We can see it's turned to blue. It recognizes that a special character, and I'm going to put the number six there. You know what? Just, I'm going to do five, just because I can. Uh, we're going to make it five hours. I've been saying six the whole time. I'm going to change. And if it is, index equals lame training. Um, and that's what we'll make it source type equals lame con. I could flat out change the whole index. I could do, if I have another index, when I first demo did this for my own, I, I went to a completely different index. But because we're trying to keep this in the lame training context, I'm just going to point it to a different source type. The concept here is with this if, if it doesn't meet that criteria, so if it doesn't, it will just take the next thing I push in there, which is index equals lame training, source type equals lame DNS. If I do that, we can see this in action. I need to close off the quotes. Should work like that. And I'm going to hit, oh, we better put that down here. I'm going to put it on a completely new row. And, and now we're going to say query, and we're going to use 
So if I hit save on that, because it is less than 15, less than five hours, the index equals lame, source type equals lame con. I'm going to go grab 24 hour period and it flipped the source type. So let's actually see that in, in practice. I'm going to go add a panel. I'm going to do a new from uh, new statistics table, and I'm going to put source type. And just because I'm going to, sure, why not? Um, at, use the time picker, use the shared time picker, add to the dashboard. Make sure this works. We forgot the uh, dollar sign on the other side. And this didn't fill because there is no source IP and destination IP. But we see that we are using source type DNS. Let's save this so it all fits on one nice little screen. And I'm going to flip this to using 60 minutes. Hit submit. And now I have source IPs and destination IPs because I'm using a lame con source type. Um, if I wanted to write this differently, I could do something like this just for, as I said, just in case we're going to do, oops, not there. And I'm going to do an eval. We're going to call it source IP equals, I like the coalesce statement. It's going to take, um, I know that in DNS it uses source and in uh, DNS, um, in con it uses source IP. The way coalesce works, it says, hey, let's look at these two. If I have a source IP, that's what it becomes. If I don't, go look for the source and make it that. You can just keep on adding commas there if you want, if you have lots of different fields. But coalesce is a great way of adding those together. I'm going to go dest IP equals coalesce dest IP dest. My lame con still works, but now if I flip this to 24 hours, I should also have values for DNS. It, using that coalesce statement, this is a completely different table based on the time I'm using from my time picker. And so this allows you to do some really cool stuff with your tokens. Uh, the sky's the limit. I just use this example. Hopefully you can take this, extrapolate something else out of it, use it for other stuff. But it's the proof of concept. It's a good uh, exercise. I have purposes in the stuff I do to want to be looking at two different sources. I use summarized data. And the summarizing only occurs so often. And so for the first few hours, I want to use the non-summarized data. And then if it's a bigger time period, start using the summarized data. And that's because there's gaps. You only have summarized data every time the query runs. If the query runs every four hours, you only have summarized data every four hours. And so this is a methodology that you can use that I've used to allow me to search both sets of data depending on uh, the time criteria. I hope this was useful. If it was, give it a big thumbs up. Um, I'd love it if you subscribe to the channel. And I hope this video was useful. Share it with your friends if you did. Um, and I hope this helps you move from being a lame analyst to a uh, Splunk Ninja.